Hello there everybody and welcome back to the Soul Ash 2 demo. After my tragic demise in the last gameplay attempt of mine, I felt like I had to return and I had to give this game another go. So I did some playing behind the scenes and I wanted to introduce to you fine folks a real fun gameplay of pyromancy and protection. It is crazy, it is fun, and it is quite powerful, and it'll allow us to see more of the world, uh, that's a quite good thing. Also, if you pick adventuring, pick that knife, it's amazing. I'm gonna show you why. So, pyromancy allows us to cast spells. We're gonna go as an orphan, I don't want any ties with anybody, because those sodding villages right now, they aren't nearly as done as they need to be. But the starting village will provide us with something very important, and that's water. Also, we have skill points, so I'm going to be quite blunt here. We're going to put it all into intelligence, because as a spellcaster, that's directly amplifying my damage, and that's what I want to do. Because, you know, I'm a spellcaster. I like to burn rabbits, and since I now have a knife, I can just scavenge them. And what did I find here? Meat and fine fur. So, a knife is really a powerhouse in quite in the early game because it allows you to gather materials so much more efficiently. This uh, was a big mistake from, uh, mistake from my first attempt. So, the fountain here, first off, we drink from it, and then we fill the water bottle that I picked as a second thing from the adventuring tree. Pretty good stuff. You can now go for whatever these people are doing here or you just don't. It doesn't really matter that much. You can interact with these folks. And what's important to know is that everybody here has a job and these jobs provide different materials. And it also provides different needs and things they want to have. And also, you can sometimes just enter stuff like that. That's uh, un nothing I expected. So we can craft us a torch if we have a source of firewood. Sadly, we currently lack firewood. I'm going to explore that place some someday soon. We should just go into the wilderness and see what we can find there. With Pyromancy at our, um, as our main damage dealing uh, thing, we will have a good time. And the combo of Shield and Pyromancy is actually stupidly powerful. Because the very first skill you get, at least here in the demo, is Shield Slam. Which projects uh, the enemy a couple of steps away from you. And this is really cool when you're a ranged attacker. I'm gonna show you why. So, we're gonna enter that region. What is it here? The rabbit hole. So, the rabbit hole is actually really peaceful. Not bad. So, the only thing there is to be said about the rabbit hole, it's dark down there. And I still need a source of firewood. So, I can't craft myself a torch. So, here, the rabbit hole. That's the thing. So let's see if we can find us some uh, some wood lying around near those trees. Sometimes you can find a scrap, but turns out I'm not lucky. Yeah, well, it's more like a nuisance than anything else. Let's get down there. Let's rest up. So... What happens if I melee attack that stuff? Well, we can... We cannot harvest it because we don't have a harvesting tool, but I was wondering if one can harvest this like that, but this is actually way too annoying. Alright, so down here, there's wabbits. That's mostly it. And glowing crystals that seem to serve as a light source. The best part about the rabbits down here is we can kill them all and get ourselves neat... Uh, rewards from that. Ooh, I could mine these. Sweet. There's also some copper in the wall. Soul Ash 2 is way more sandbox heavy than Soul Ash 1, and I totally dig it. Really, it's uh, something I, I very, very much appreciate. And there's carrots in the rabbit hole, of course. So, I wonder if this whole Ascension to Godhood scheme still is a thing this game. I really pretty much hope so, because I I really would miss it if not. There we 
There we go. The evil pyromancer. All right. But these are really cool resources that are worth a couple of coins that we can sell later. So here's our first reward. All right, the Bane of Vampires and a couple of Straw Gloves. Sure thing. It's not exactly what I would call a, uh, a wonderful reward, but uh, whatever. It is as it is. I really don't mind. The most attractive point here are, as a matter of fact, the carrots. Because it's free food. In the beginning of, game, of the game, free food is a pretty good thing. So I feel as if the sound here is a little bit too harsh. Let's put it down like that. I always got that problem, but I feel like the crunchy sounds of my boots were just a tad bit too loud on my ears. So we haven't had any combat yet, but uh, as soon as we will, the really cool part about this build is quite simply said, if the enemy gets close to us, we just slam him back with our shield end of the story. It's just stupidly powerful. It's um, making it pretty hard for the enemy to engage on you, so we should really come back one day soon. It's making it hard for the enemy to come back at you because they have to traverse a couple of squares and you can't just rest up and fire at them. It's pretty good. But I gotta say, this walk off the map, I, I would be... Um, I would be not sad at all if it would be gone and good forever. I wouldn't be missing it. So, the Oasis. Bye-bye. <laughs> not going to get close to that. Not yet, that is. So. Isn't there... Ah, here. I was already wondering. There aren't any uh, events there. So, it's midnight. We're hungry. So, let's eat some. Would still appreciate some hunger um, bar here. That would be really dope. But these are only little things. Doesn't matter that much to me. As far as the rest of the game is going on like that. So if you watch the last video, you will know how I how I struggled with those wolves and whatnot. I'll show you how it's going how it's going now. So there's the crude firewood I was looking for. That's our torch, my friends. So far, I gotta say, this game is really, really nice. It's in a very, very good way. It just has not enough content, but seriously, it's a demo. I don't want to mope too loud. So now the wolf is coming in close to me. I can rest up. And while he's getting closer to me, I get up the shield wall. Boom. Rest up once more. Slam him into the face. Rest up once more. Ignite. And rinse and repeat. Sometimes you gotta slap them in the face manually, but apart from that, the shield slam thing is so good. It's really, really good. Alright, we're gonna take down as many of these wolves as we can. So this is not good for our strategy, because the wolf is too close to the uh, wall. I want some distance that I can't slam this thing back into. Just like that. And this is making it really hard for the enemies to actually react to you. I think this needs to be a little bit tuned down. Or, well, I don't know. Personally think it's a, a tad bit cheesy, but I know, you know, I do like it still. It's a lot of fun, and it allows me to explore the game well. And I felt like sharing, in case you didn't, uh, you, you want to have that as well. Because <clears throat> pyromancy can't miss. Oh, and now we got the Dragon Breath, so things are getting funkier now. So now we have a second attacking uh, attack opportunity. Hmm, Scarab Shell. If we make it uh, something out of it, it will have extra intelligence. These extra stats on these materials, they are so cool. I already crafted a little bit around between this and the last gameplay record, and basically every item is composed out of several materials. What's wrong with you? You're not looking too healthy, sweetie. Ah, oh, it's just the bushes below the cow. 
All right. So I'm not sparing any cow here. Nah. -uh. Cows are really good at providing meat, and meat they shall provide here. So this is the dragon's breath skill. So it's really kick ass. And before anything can get close to me, I'm gonna slam it back into the wall. So this cow is actually smart, but not smart enough. There we go. So far, magic is far superior be, uh, uh, compared to combat. At least it feels like that. Early game, that is. I don't know. Haven't uh, played around with melee far enough to have a really um, educated uh, statement here. But so far, pyromancy is really crazy good and fun. So I put also, by the way, the uh, link to the uh, demo of Steam down there. And... It's up there until the 31st of October 2023. After that, it's not going to be available anymore because the game goes into further development. But I really loved Soul Ash 1 so much that this was a must play for me the moment it came out. And so far, I can say it's a clear step forward. It's a clear step forward. The only thing that I'm lacking so far is a little bit direction or something like that, but whatever. I, I really don't mind. It feels pretty good to be able to play it like, uh, like you do here. So... Okay, so we can slaughter the rest of the cows here. That's why I didn't spear a single cow. They provide so much meat and leather. And we're gonna pick up some straw here. It's going to be our starting funds, you know. Wait a sec. What did I do? guess I rested up. So, looting is important, you know. Straw and all, everything you can carry. Speaking about carrying, we're at the end of our carrying capacity weight. So, we got so much meat in our pockets, we need to get rid of it. But we will, don't you worry. Oh, look, the rabbits. We're not going to hurt them, though. So... Oh, I... I, I did scavenge something I didn't want to scavenge. So there was a person here. Um, I'm sorry, Bob. Didn't mean to. Knife slipped. Alrighty. So we got all that. We're going to go now towards a, a place where we can sell or loot and get ourselves a little bit uh, further. Also, I have no more water on me. That's bad. So we're going to go to the... Uh, Final Crypt Camp? I don't know if that is, is that a good idea. You know what? We're, we're going to go and see the village there. These guys, I don't know who they are, what they are. So, I'm starting to be dehydrated. This is bad. Let's do something against that. That's why I'm heading back to the village. Oh, it, I can also craft me a torch, I think, so we can take a peek into the rabbit holes there. But now, first off, have a drink, and we're going to have a nibble on our meat. We're, I don't know if you can't cook it here anywhere. The last village I was checking didn't have a cooking spot, but we're going to craft a torch now. So it requires firewood which we can provide, and that's all we need. And now we got ourselves a torch. Putting that into the main hand. And go downstairs. And light it up. That's how we do it. I have no clue what's down here. I, I didn't know that these can spawn. Um independently from that uh, rabbit hole event. So it, it seems as if there are, these are just cool little mining tunnels below the village. All right. These little things are, are stuff I really love about the new version of Soul Ash. The more of these the game spawns, the better, basically. It'll make the world very, very rich over the course of the time. It's really good appreciate that so everybody out of here we can just talk to them and trade 
or of with them and let's see so they will be paying a good price for meat so we're gonna be selling or or meat here this guy has a lot of gold i i appreciate that the uh, people here are not poor <laughs> so i'm gonna sell the cow milk as well and apart from that, you see, rabbit fur isn't worth that much to this person. I don't know why, but whatever. We got 70 coins. I don't know. Let's sell some of these other goods here as well. I really want to have a bit of money at my disposal when I go over to the... Let's see. would need to go to the Bardarul Mines. Because that's where we can find a tool maker. Because that's, as far as I've seen, the only way that you can get yourself something like a pickaxe going. Unless you get lucky and you loot it somewhere. These guys have a spear maker. So let's see. The people here, they have a bowyer, they have a tailor, but they don't have a tool maker. Mines usually always have tool makers. There we go. But it's a pretty long hike. Let's see. These people, sling maker, hunter... A temple well we have to pay them a visit um nevertheless because i don't think i will make it over there alive without um without taking a break somewhere where people have a water source because that's something that really can get quite problematic and problematic during your travels Food is actually quite easy to come by, but uh, water, I had really a lot of problems. It's really weird, though, that my character was pathing besides the street. <laughs> well, whatever. So, the most important thing, at the fountain. I really like it how much attention has been paid to the fact that you often enter the map right besides a water source. You know, that's not happening just by chance. It's been made to be happen uh, to happen like that. Jeez, they have a lot of wild cats here. I'm out of here. I I just went uh, I I just went for a sip on the fountain. Thank you guys. So I hope we're going to make it now to the bar to rule mine. And as you see here, there's a lot of adventuring spots that we can visit. The uh, other day, so we're already starting to be dehydrated. It's a little bit sad, isn't it? So. Let's go downstairs. I don't see a fountain here, but I did see... Ah, here. There's the water source. So let's fill our container. Catch fish. Cool. Can also catch fish here. So we need to find the toolmaker's shop now. Just like in real life, you know. So we don't know any occupation. Here, Grudge Forge's Toolmaker. Um. Ah, it's now it's now blinking on my map. Very useful. Nice. All right. So the Toolmaker is where we can order something. I want to order a hatchet. So this guy can use either my materials or the materials I buy from him. This is pretty cool. So, come on, dude. You don't have any metal here? Are you kidding me? Ugh. Okay. Then, obviously, I have to buy some metal from somebody. Are you guys not having any metal here? Is that the case? That would be a shame how to make uh, tools then. So... Let's ask the map. The mine does produce all manner of different uh, metals here, so there should be plenty. So let's see, can I ask for the direction to the mine? Because that's where I'm supposed to find metal. I don't know, maybe, is there a smelter? Probably I should ask for that. Hey man, so... Let's see, but they they don't seem to have any other places. Alright, 
So it seems as if the mine is the the right place to go. So let's go through our food stockpiles. We also don't have that much food anymore. So I just hope that the miners over there are willing to sell me some of their goods. So there we go. Copper ore. Are you kidding me, man? No. So it turns out this mine here is only producing the raw materials and not smeltering it, eh? So are you guys lacking something? The last place I've been at had no, had no problems like these. So, well... Too bad, but it doesn't help. We have to go for another place, another adventure. So, well, seems like I have to get me some uh, ingots in any way. I don't know how we're going to pull this off, but I'm pretty sure it'll work somehow. All right. Probably there is a trick that I don't know of to get me some metal here, but well... That's what I mean. That's a uh, quite a hike that I'm taking here just to get off the map. Why is it so long? Good. All right, the automatic pathfinding isn't that good. I don't uh, trust it that much anymore. Cavian Village. So let's try it out. I am poor, I need stuff. It's that flint. Alright, should probably hold on to that. Alright. The real cool part is that you can set up camp wherever you want in this game and call it your home. Probably want to do this here, huh? So I need to find out how to get to that village though. One thing I really wish very, very dearly for in a finished version of Soul Ash 2 would be the ability to have a mini-map of the surroundings here. That's currently the one thing that I'm missing most. That when I'm pressing M, I don't see anything about my environment here. And the maps here are really large enough to validate a, uh, a separate map there. Because I really have a hard time finding my way around these maps. Because they're just so huge. But I don't mind them being huge, you know. The world is huge after all. But, you know, a mini-map would be really helpful in this uh, regard, I think. So, let's uh, sleep a while. And that's the Cavian village. Let's nibble some. Because during combat, we will not have much time for doing so. So, a cavian, feathered humanoid creature, yeah. So, now that I have two fire skills, the situation has become even worse for these little buggers. So, feathers and bird bones and gear okay so hopefully we'll find some food here yay my pyromancy went up i love it so yep the the bats they they offer us uh, food so one thing that's really important is just don't go for too many people at once. I might have nice AoE and such, but I'm still a freaking mage. I think. I gotta lie, this build feels darn powerful. But I mean, it's a demo after all, isn't it? So, 
but I felt like featuring at least one gameplay where we're going in totally badass and uh, ripping them apart. Because, you know, my first contact with the game wasn't as glorious. All right. But so far, I got to say, this is a lot of fun. This feels so much more vibrant than the uh, than its predecessor ever did. Now, all we need is a little bit more of a direction. You know, probably uh, bigger fates that you want to pick up, you know. Not only selecting your species, but also like your ambitions. What kind of person you want to be. What's your bigger goal in the world. I can already foresee a lot of wonderful ideas and things that this game can um, offer. This is good. It's really good. It sparks my, my, my creativity. And I think it was a very, very smart choice from the developer to go the way that he went with the game. So the plain leather pauldrons and all these items, they look quite nice. So does this hurt my spellcasting ability? I don't think so. So... Let's equip these things, you know. Being armored certainly doesn't hurt. Okay. So the most imp interesting part is now the question, how far can we take it? Whispering Talisman, Intelligence plus three. Noise. All right. Straw apron. Mm, not so noise. But, you know, before I wear nothing, I'm going to wear a straw apron. So this is a... Oh, this is a resource. It ain't something that you can't wear. It looked like something you can't wear, but it ain't. Cool. So how much meat did I procure? Not much. But say, I did kill more than two bats. Alright. So let's see if it works like in the, in the previous games. Yeah, there's... Uh, feathers and the like. So... No, I didn't mean to wear that. So here, salvage. Back in the day, salvaging things gave you resources. There we go, bird bone. Because everything in this game is specifically made out of something specific, it is also quite uh, easy to to get exactly what you used, which is pretty cool. I wonder if we are gaining some sort of experience while doing this. I would be surprised if not. So there's a mountain top here. So that's all? That's what you call a cave and village? One house? And a couple of beds? Oh well. What a shame. I would, have, would have killed a couple of them more. But whatever. So... Or is there a hidden upstairs in this thing? Leather wall. No, this is uh, obviously some sort of a tent. Maybe down there is more. All the road. Uh, sadly not. I feel like a monster. Alright. So, we're gonna leave this place. I'm a little bit uh, of food richer than before. But again, it's very important for me that we're um, getting ourselves or our water supplies. Dehydration is deadly. All right, let's move on over to the next adventure. I mean, getting in some food somewhere ain't that hard. You just need to kill a random animal. But traversing longer distances over the world map is a little bit problematic without water skins and the like, so I probably should check back where there are people that are capable of making things like these. But one thing at a time. So the next location is the mountain cave. 
but I will do that on the next episode. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. We're going to pilfer through this world a little bit more. I want to see what this demo has in store. I want to get, get a little bit deeper into the pyromancy stuff because it's a lot of fun. And most importantly, I want to share with you this game because it's a really, really, it, it's going to be really cool. I can't wait for it to be done. So feel free to leave me your comments. Thumbs up, subscriptions, the usual things would be really, really nice. And as usual, a quick pointer towards Patreon, PayPal, and buy me a coffee. And to my secondary Let's Play channel, which is in the topmost comment. The link there is waiting for subscriber 1000. And once that's a thing, I'll be publishing way more things there. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. Thanks for being here until the very end of the video. And see you next time. Bye-bye.